Something that we have learned in college algebra that we will need to know for the course, and this is actually going to play a pretty big role in a lot of the problems that we do in uh, the next chapters. So um, the domain of a function. The domain of a function are the x values that are allowed to be used for a function. So we're talking about uh, basically allowed x values. There's a few reasons why an x value might not be allowed into a function. Um, first we're going to talk about the basically kind of our rule. Our rule is that when we put a real number into a function, whatever real number goes in, it has to give us a real number out. So real number in for x, and then that means that we have to get a real number out as output for y. So for example, when I look at the first function f of x equals 1 over x, this is what we would call a rational function. And we call it a rational function because it has a variable in the denominator. Something that would cause a problem here is let's say that I let x be 0. If a 0 goes into the function in place of x on the left, then we would also put it in place of x on the right. 1 over 0, well we know that we're not allowed to divide by 0. This actually gives us something that is undefined. Okay, So you put a 0 in, that's a real number, and we get out undefined. Well, what we're supposed to put in is a real number that on the only real numbers we can put in are to get real numbers out. I put a 0 in, but I don't get a real number out. We get out undefined. Undefined, of course, is not a number, it's a concept, so we have to exclude any x value from the domain that does not give us a real number out. So for this, our domain would look like this. We're going to write our real number line here. And of course our real number line goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we're going to exclude the value of 0. Okay, so I'm going to put an open circle on 0. This is the only value that we have to toss out. There's no other problem that's going to cause problems um, for this particular fraction. So we're going to use everything except for 0. So here we would say that the domain, the allowed values for x, are going to be from negative infinity to 0. We're going to exclude 0. And remember that when we exclude an x value, we use the open parentheses. And then we're going to use everything after 0. So we're going to exclude 0 again by putting the parentheses there. Remember the parentheses mean not included. And we're going to go, we're basically following the picture. We're going to go all the way from 0 to infinity. And we, of course, we never include infinity. Infinity always has parentheses beside it. So that would be what we call the domain of that function. Another example would be when we encounter a square root function. Okay, so this is a square root function. Here, the problem would be, let's say that I take our function g, and let's say that I put in a negative 1. Well, if I put that in place of x, we get the square root of negative 1. And we know that the square root of negative 1 is not a real number. And in fact, we call that an imaginary number. That's the definition of i. That's our imaginary unit. And of course, if something is an imaginary number, it's not a real number. So therefore, negative numbers get excluded. So here, when we're looking at the number line, so our real number line, I can put anything in from 0, so anything positive in any value that's 0, so anything from 0 on. Okay, So I'm not allowed to use any negative values. All the negative values are excluded. Okay, So the domain of this particular function, the x values that I'm allowed to put in that are going to give me a real number in and also give me a real number out are going to be anything from 0 and including 0. When we use the brackets we mean to include that value all the way to positive infinity but we never include infinity. So these are the two things we're looking out for. A rational function 
any function that has a variable in the denominator could potentially come back undefined. And we want to rule out any x values that would cause uh, 0 to appear in the denominator. Um, we also want to look out for square root functions. We want to make sure that we never end up with a negative value underneath the square root because then we end up with an imaginary output. Um, so the third function here, h of x, uh, this is a um, what we call a quadratic function. And a quadratic function um, has no issues. There's no denominators with, with uh, variables in them. And then there's no fractions at all, so there's no denominators. And there's no square roots. Okay, there's no radicals at all, in fact. So here we would say that the domain is all real numbers. So we're going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that means there's nothing that has to be excluded. There are no problems. I can use any number from the entire number line, and I will never come out with an imaginary number or a undefined value. Okay, so my outputs are all going to be real numbers. The same will be true for any odd index radical, so cube roots or fifth roots. So this is a cube root. We actually don't have any issues here either. So let's say, for example, I put in a negative 8 into the function. The cube root of negative 8 actually turns out to be negative 2. So real number in, real number out. So we are good to go. So no issues there with cube roots coming out with imaginary values. So here's kind of our over, overview here. Um, polynomial functions, and a polynomial function is basically here our function h of x. It's just a kind of a fancy name to say that the function has um, no uh, var variables and denominators and also has no square roots. So polynomial functions, no problems, and radical functions with an odd index, so those cube roots that we talked about there at the last problem. Those are going to all have domains of all real numbers. No problems at all, no issues. Um, if I'm looking for the domain of a rational function, so let's go back up here. So B says to find the domain of a rational function, remember that a rational function has a variable in the denominator. If I want to find the domain of the rational functions, then I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0, and we're going to solve for x. We're going to find out what makes that denominator turn out to be 0. We're going to find out all the x values that might cause that to happen. And then we're going to toss them out. So the domain will be all of the real numbers except the values that we found for x that cause that denominator to become 0. Okay. To find the domain of even index functions, okay, so if I have a square root, for example, we're going to take what's underneath the square root. We're going to set it to be greater than or equal to 0. Remember that all this does is that it keeps what's underneath that square root to be positive. We can only take pot square roots of positive numbers. And then we're going to solve for x. All right, we'll look at the others as well. So let's look at the first one here. Find the domain of the following functions. So first we want to identify what type of function are we looking at. Are we looking at a polynomial function? Are we looking at a rational function? Um, square root function, what type of function. So we can see here that we are dealing with a rational function because we do have a variable in the denominator. So I'm gonna, if I'm going to work with uh, variables and denominators and solving for that domain, what I do not want is I do not want the denominator to become 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that denominator of x minus 5 and we're going to set that equal to 0. So what would x have to be in order to make that happen? Well, x, of course, would have to be 5. So I'd add 5 to both sides of that equation. We get x equals 5. And of course, this is the value that we have to exclude, because that causes a problem. And the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for, I'm going to look at my number line here. I'm going to write down the 5. And I'm going to put an open circle there. That just kind of gives me an indicator that I'm not using the 5. But I can use anything to the left or right of 5. So we've, we've only eliminated one value that causes problems, and that's a positive 5. So the domain, I'm going to read it right off of my number line, would be from negative infinity all the way to 5. And I'm not including the 5, I'm not including negative infinity. 
And using this little union symbol here, all that does is says use everything from both per both sets. Um, so that's basically all it says is just unite all of this as one single answer. So I'm going to put a union symbol there. Then I'm going to go to the right of the 5. So I'm going to say don't include the 5, but use everything after that all the way to positive infinity. So this would be the domain. So remember what we're doing is we're saying 5 it cannot be included. And let's just prove that 5 will cause a problem. So if I put a 5 in place of x, we have 5 squared plus 3 divided by 5 minus 5. Okay, that gives us 25 plus 3, which is 28, all over. Now here's the thing, is that 5 minus 5 would give us 0. So if x was 5, the denominator would be 0, we'd get something undefined. And that's not a real number, so that means I cannot include the 5. Right, so just kind of testing out our, our answer there. Alright, so for our next example here, uh, we have once again a rational function, and we're going to set that denominator again. We're going to set that equal to zero. It's a little bit more interesting of an equation. So we have x squared minus three, and then that whole group is squared, and we have that equal to zero. So we're going to take that denominator of that rational function, and we're going to set it equal to zero. That's our first step. We're going to solve for x. So in order to solve a square function, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. Now remember, technically, we also do plus or minus, but of course, square root of 0 is 0, plus or minus 0 is just 0. So we end up with x squared minus 3 equals 0. And then I'm going to solve for x. So once again, I have a square function, so I'm going to need, first of all, to isolate that x squared. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I get x squared equals positive 3. And then once again, since I have x squared, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget our plus and minus when we take square root of both sides. So here's what we get. We get x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So in order to find our domain, we're going to write our number line. And we're going to label square root of negative, negative square root of 3 and square root of positive 3. So negative on the outside there, negative, and then square root of positive 3, and then just positive square root of 3. And we are going to exclude those two values. So we're going to put open circles, and then we're going to highlight everything around and in between. Okay, so not only do we get to what's to the left and to the right, but we also get what's in between the two. So our domain, just excluding those two values, our domain would be now from negative infinity all the way to negative square root of 3. And we're basically just reading that right off of our number line, excluding both of those values. Union. We're going to include everything that's in between. So negative square root of 3 to positive square root of 3. And then we're going to union again. We're going to get everything after positive square root of 3. So from square root of 3 all the way to positive infinity.